It's that time of the month again where I'm highlighting the best of the previous month, this time looking at June because it is now July and yeah I'll be honest June wasn't the most star studded month of the year. There's been some pretty big releases but in terms of like the best stuff I don't think the best of the best has come out this past month but there's definitely worthwhile albums to discuss to talk about as always as there is every month and there's been some pretty big releases that you probably like a little bit more than I do anyway maybe Angel Olsen big fan of Regina it wasn't you know an album that's absolutely swept me off my feet but I do want to mention albums like that because they have come out they have had some really good songs on them they're just not going to be albums I'm going to be you know coming back to on a regular basis and highlighting for the best of the year. Do you want to mention though, Lupe Fiasco, I think his album's been pretty good. I think it was one that I couldn't really muster up a huge amount to say in an official review for. I don't like to just waste my time recording videos saying things for the sake of it unless I've got something interesting to say. Don't think I really had anything interesting to add to the conversation with Lupe, other than the fact that really, I think he's found a good way to finally streamline his album lengths, which uh, has felt like something that he's not been able to do for like however many albums now. Uh, not to say that long albums are inherently bad, but I just don't think his approach to these really lengthy, huge albums has been doing him any favours and just streamlining it, making it more digestible and keeping his usual interesting, you know, rapping uh, ideas uh, has just made it for, for to be one of his best albums in so many years now I think. He's, his hook game's improved too, I think some of the hooks on this album, some of the features have really killed it. So yeah, Lupe Fiasco did a good job. I want to mention Shintaro Sakamoto, a really cool pop album here, not the most flashiest thing you're going to hear in the world, but tracks like Like a Fable are incredibly catchy and he does a lot with a little. I think he's just a really interesting artist that is deserving of more credit. Isn't really an artist that's gonna, you know, break through and shine amongst all the indie critics anytime soon, but he's definitely putting out music that is certainly worth your time. As are Joyce Manor as ever. You can't go wrong with a single Joyce Manor album, to be fair. I think they offer pretty similar things across all their albums. They're spunky. They're punky, they're energetic, uh, Souvenir is excellent and there's so many good tracks across this album too. Even If Dance With Me uh, sounds like Bowling For Soups 1985. Seriously, listen to that song again and then please tell me you hear that because I really feel alone in that. A late arrival to my uh, best of the year so far is Tourist. Couldn't label this as the best of the month though, even though it's the best album I've listened to and played in June for sure from this year easily uh, and that I discovered this month um, but I can't label it that because it came out I think in March it's been out a good while now but it is fantastic truly going to be one of my highlights of the year by the end of the year <clears throat> just a really really well put together like ambient techno uh, house album that just is really blissful and at points reminds me of some like you know, that, that kind of like beautiful approach that Porter Robinson takes just kind of has that like really nice life affirming feel that his music has as well. Just a fantastic album all in all. Uh, had to mention it uh, because because it, it just needs more hype, to be honest, especially amongst electronic music fans. You got to hear it. And a bit of a surprise for my album of the month, particularly considering I wasn't really that you know, hyped for it. I wasn't really anticipating it, but sometimes those albums, as I've said many times on this channel before, end up being some of your favourite ones. And while I don't think it's going to be, you know, super high on a year-end list, it might even end up being an honourable mention, but Soccer Mummy has, for me, put out the best album I heard in June. I think the improvements from her previous stuff are so stark and, you know, noticeable. Like, it's a really impressive release from her pairing with OPN, One Oh Tricks Point Never, who just seems to turn anything he touches into gold nowadays. He's become this super producer working with the likes of The Weeknd and now he's working with smaller artists like Soccer Mummy and just raising the bar for those artists uh, to new levels and pushing their music to different places and to new heights. 
that they weren't necessarily reaching before. The weekend, you know, has put out some fantastic music over the years, but of course, just OPN's production has just changed the 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 sort of dynamic and changed the direction that the weekend's gone in. And I feel like the same's happened with Soccer Mummy as well. Just such fantastic production. The vocals are more emotive. They're more um center stage the tracks just sound really well put together it's a really good album uh, a few flaws amongst the track list would stop this from me calling it really great but i'm glad i'm here to call it album of the month for june because it really deserves that kind of label and that's it a pretty short list for june but i suppose we are coming up to the mid-year lists where i'm going to be giving you some big big song lists and album lists for the year as a whole so you know i guess june can be a bit shorter this time uh, to make way for those bigger chunkier lists so be on the lookout for those but before we get to those this video isn't quite done yet because i'm gonna let the songs play out now the best songs of june go Sometimes I look in her eyes and that's where I find a glow. 